Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I am Bob Fowler and what an honor, privilege, and joy it truly is for me to be with you today. I pray that whether you're watching this on the live stream or on the rebroadcast, that you stick with me. I believe that the Holy Spirit has a word for you today. Have you ever been or are you presently in a situation you just don't know what to do? You don't know who to turn to. Your back's against the wall. It seems like everything is against you. Emotions are frayed and you don't know what to do. Well, I want to encourage you today. God has a word for you. And if you'll open your heart and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that the Holy Spirit would minister to me today, speak to me today, clarify things to me today, and communicate to me. I believe with you. Now, if any two of you concerning anything come into agreement, it shall be done. I come into agreement with you today that you're going to receive not just what you're believing God for, but even more. Remember, he is the exceeding abundant above all that we'd ever ask or think according to the power or in agreement with the power that is presently working in you. Listen, I know sometimes we focus on what's against us, what's working against us, what's trying to destroy us, diminish us, tear us down. And oftentimes we focus on that. And what does that do? It affects our emotions. Well, we're, we as believers are not called to live according to what we see on the outside. Come on, this is a good word for somebody right here. You and I are called to live and, uh, and believe and agree what the word says. Listen, the word clarifies there's going to be mountains. If not, Jesus would not have said, if you speak to this mountain, believe in your heart. Don't doubt, it shall be removed. We all face mountains of different forms, fashions, different things. But God is present with you. Now that has, well, it does have something to do with what we're going to talk about today. But I just felt in my heart to share that with somebody. Don't give up. You're on the brink of a miracle. And how can I say that? Because as I always say at the end of the program, he's faithful. You may not understand. And I believe that today's message is going to correlate with you, you and your circumstance. It's going to fit like a hand in a glove. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has laid this message on my heart and I want to share it with you today. We're going to begin, I believe, a series because I sure won't get through all of this today. Because the title alone, just because you have an Ishmael, doesn't mean God forgot your Isaac. Now, I want you to think about that. Just because you have an Ishmael doesn't mean that God has forgotten about your Isaac. Your Isaac is the perfect plan, the perfect will, the steps being ordered as the Holy Spirit leads us and we yield ourselves to him. They lead to the perfect will of God. However, some of us, from time to time, don't walk, don't live, don't, don't think, don't live in the perfect will of God. And I'm talking about believers now. Areas of our life, maybe it's condemnation, guilt, and shame over something that you did. An Ishmael. Let me just clarify from the very beginning that Ishmael was a misstep was a mistake, was the result of disobeying what God had, had told Abram, okay? But God works even with our mistakes and our failures. Let's get into this today. Hey, if you're a real person, if you live a real life, if you, if you don't try to be a phony, but you're just real, I believe this message is going to be encouraging to you because it's going to require us to be open and yielded to simply say, Father, if there's anything in my life that I've done, that I've said, that I've made a misstep, that I've created and produced an Isaac, I want you to forgive me. 
I receive your forgiveness. I receive the pardon. I receive your forgiveness and love and tenderness, even concerning a failure. Let's get into this. Just because you have an Ishmael does not mean that God has forgotten your Isaac. Genesis chapter 16, beginning at verse 5. Now, Sarai, kind of a challenging name for me to say. We typically know her as Sarah, but she was not Sarah in this particular portion of Scripture. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, now, see now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. I know it's a crazy story. And Abram heeded, listen, yielded to his wife's voice. Now listen, I'm not anti-wife, I'm not anti-husband. But you need to know that both people are influencers in a marriage. And this marriage was out of order. Now, I know in our modern day, our liberated free day, that rubs some people the wrong way. But God spoke to the man of the house and gave him a plan. And it was up to him to communicate that plan and minister that plan to his wife. He was not successful, so he yielded. Uh, he 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 yielded, uh, heeded to his wife's voice. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And a after after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went to Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. Have you ever had an Ishmael? Have you ever made a misstep? And has that misstep been something that you can't get rid of? They had the baby. His name was Ishmael. It created all kinds of problems in his home, his marriage, his relationship, not only with his wife, but unfortunately his relationship with God because he knew he made a misstep. He yielded and heeded to his wife's voice in a weak, desperate moment. Now, I want to stop and say something. We have all been there in desperate moments where we're tested, we're tried, we're tempted, Prayerfully, we do the right thing, but sometimes we do the wrong thing. After we've received a promise, after we have a word, after we know what God wants to do in our life, and we make a misstep, we commit a sin, a failure, we miss the mark, which is literally what sin in its definition means. Totally missed the mark. Well, I got to tell you today that just because you produced an Ishmael in your life does not mean that God has forgotten your Isaac. Whether you're a minister and you failed, you feel like you cannot go back into the pulpit in the ministry. The good news is, is that there's grace, there's mercy, there's forgiveness, there's tenderness, there's God's love, redemption and restoration for you. But the calling and gift of God is without repentance. Listen, if God has called you, no matter what has happened, 
whether you've run from God, failed in your relationship with God, sinned, whatever, you need to know God has not forgotten or forsaken the call of God on your life. You may not see a way. Maybe it's scandalous. Maybe, maybe there's shame and embarrassment. Whatever the situation, when the dust settles, you are still called. In whatever capacity or function, God has called you to. I don't know who the Holy Spirit is reaching out to, but you need to know He's already forgiven you. He's already restored you. And let me, let, me, let me remind all of us of something. Before Peter fell, Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do, and he told him so. But that did not negate, remove, erase the call of God on Peter's life. After Jesus revealed his future, he went even further into his restoration. He said, Peter... Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you that your faith fails not. And when you're converted, strengthen, minister, communicate, get back in the saddle and go forward. Don't stay stuck and don't stay stuck in reverse. Keep moving forward. You know, a few minutes ago, I was reminded of something that the Lord told me that I've shared with you often, that as you move forward, I will remove every obstacle. I will meet every need. That was the word of the Lord to me. And I was thinking as I was driving a few moments ago, the point of attack that the enemy is going to focus in on that promise is moving forward. As, as, it's conditional. That word of the Lord to me was conditional. As you move forward, I will remove every obstacle and I will meet every need. What if Abram got so stuck under condemnation, guilt, and shame? Oh, you maybe ask God to forgive him, but it haunted him. It was like a weight tied to him. And listen, we will never ever. You will never, ever go to where God has called you to go. Accomplish what God has called you to accomplish. Fulfill what God has specifically called you to fulfill if you don't move forward. Now, today is just kind of an introduction for the program, but I have to share with you something. We are all, or we all have, failed. Yes, your favorite preacher on TV has made missteps. Your, your favorite personality that you see that communicates the gospel, they've made missteps. Oh, they're not going to tell you that. But because of the human condition, many, if not all of us have produced an Ishmael. I, I'm, let me just go out on a limb. We've all created Ishmael's. We've all known the right thing to do, but we've chosen the wrong thing. We've all known the right path to travel, but we've chosen the wrong. Oh, the wrong path, it looks good for a little bit. Oh, it's fun. But the Bible says that the pleasures of sin last only for a season. Oh, sin may bring joy and pleasure for a season, but the season after that, the harvest season, because all the while we're planting seeds and eventually we're going to move past the planting phase into the reaping season. And let me tell you something, when you go that path that is not God's choice for you, God's plan for you, oh, God's plan may look a little difficult. It may not be a primrose path. It may not be pretty. It, may, it may, not, may not visually appeal to be the best one, but you know the right thing to do. It may be withholding your words. It may be waiting. It may be uh, having a moment of, of contemplation about your life and thoughts about who you are and, and, and things of a very personal nature. 
Listen, living for God and doing the right thing is not always an easy thing to do. So this message and what we're going to get into in the next few days is not a message of guilt, condemnation, and shame. It's a message of freedom. See, just because you had an Isaac does not mean that God, just because you had an Ishmael does not mean that God has forgotten your Isaac. All you have to do is stop, ask God to re receive what God has already done for you. He's already pardoned you, already forgiven you. He knew what you were going to do all of the days of your life, but he still called you. Now we need to get a hold of that. Because before you failed, before you made the misstep, before Ishmael was conceived, God knew it. So if God knew it, why would he put the calling in your life? Well, number one, he loves you. He cares for you. His heart is tender toward you. God's not mad at you. He's not disappointed in you. He is a... He, sits on the throne with anticipation. Jesus is praying and interceding for us. Praying, and I've said this before, I believe what he's praying is, Father, help them. Holy Spirit, bring them to a point. Angels, lead them to a point of receiving what we have already done. The debt has been paid. All the interest on the debt has been erased. And now all that's available for you and I is freedom. Isaac. Come on, I hope you're understanding what I'm sharing with you today because guilt, condemnation, and shame is a terrible thing. It'll bury you. It'll suffocate you. It'll smother you. It'll destroy you. And, but, but the worst thing is it will prevent you from receiving what your heavenly Father has provided for you. And the question today is, will you receive? Will you receive? You know, sometimes we continue to bring things with us, failures with us, because of our mouth. We're always talking about it. We're always bringing it up. Oh, we've confessed it before the Lord, but we're always bringing it up. And listen, receiving that freedom and separating yourself from that Ishmael it takes time. Receiving the promises of God and what God has provided for you, it takes time. But I want to encourage you today. The debt has been paid in full, and God wants you to understand that and receive that today. Just because I can hear someone say, man, I didn't just have one Ishmael. I had a whole bunch of Ishmaels. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Listen, God has an Isaac for you. And I'm praying that this week and throughout these messages, that the Holy Spirit is going to communicate to you nothing but freedom. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy, your tenderness, your kindness. Oh, Father, sometimes it's overwhelming when we stop and we think of your goodness, of your love, whether it's restoration whether it's provision of the Holy Spirit to be here with us and lead us and guide us in truth, whether it's what Christ did upon the cross through his life, death, and burial resurrection, now sit, sitting at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercession for you. I pray that you'd receive today. I pray that today that the Holy Spirit would lead you into a place of freedom, of joy, of peace, and leave your sorrows behind. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Just because you've had an Ishmael does not mean that God has forgotten your Isaac. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Hey, 
I've enjoyed my time with you today. I pray you've enjoyed the message. If it's been a blessing to you, would you share it with somebody on your social media platforms? Come on, we need people to get involved. I want to encourage you to please get involved. If you haven't been to our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to go there at Faith is the Victory of Fellowship YouTube. There you're going to find all of our programs, and I believe they're going to be a blessing to you. Last but not least, I want to ask you to do something. During this holiday season of giving, I don't want you to forget ministries and people that are trying to encourage and impact people with the gospel. Whether you're a person that goes to church or a person that is blessed by the messages that we communicate here at Faith is a Victory Fellowship. In the description section, you're going to find several safe, simple, and secure ways in which you can contribute with confidence, safety, and security. Hey, whatever your gift is, I thank you so very, very much. We need your help. And I'm saying by faith, the need is met in Jesus' name. Hey, I can't wait to be back here tomorrow to spend time with you. But until then, I want, you to t I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget, He is faithful.